11 games left for the Timberwolves in the regular season. We're coming down to the wire. Can they keep winning without cap? We'll talk about it on today's Minnesota basketball party. This is Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. It's endless Minnesota Timberwolves talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. It's time for the Minnesota basketball party on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in. It's Wolves Talk every Wednesday here on Locked On Sports Minnesota. I am Sam Ekstrom, the host of the show, and we're so glad you're with us today on a snowy Wednesday in the Twin Cities. Uh, we're talking Timberwolves for the next 45 minutes or so as we do every single week. And it was a good week for the Timberwolves. They beat the Cavs on Friday. They beat the Warriors on Sunday. They have the Pistons tonight at Target Center, and they've been winning without Cat. They've been winning with Nas in the starting lineup. We'll talk about that change and how it's uh, it's looked on the Timberwolves. And we'll even talk a little brackets, folks. Yes, we'll talk about our busted brackets and are there any prospects the Wolves fans should be watching for in these college games. We'll also predict the week. Wolves have four games between now and our next show. That should be a fun segment as always. But we'll meet the crew today with our opening tip. I'm Jack Borman, editor-in-chief of Canis Hoopus, uh, co-host of the Locked On Wolves postcast with my man Luke Inman. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about why the offensive identity the Timberwolves are forming without Carl Anthony Towns uh, should be what it looks like once uh, once Carl does come back. And I'm Ron Johnson, former Gophers and NFL wide receiver, also Gophers Hall of Famer. I'm going to talk about, one, I love what Jack's talking about with this offense without Cat, but I'm going to talk about why Anthony Edwards needs to hit up Perk and send the video. <laughs> what? <laughs> How do I come after that? <laughs> I'm, I'm Reggie Wilson, Carol Levin Sports Director. <laughs> and yeah, just going off of Jack's point, um, the Wolves are doing some things without Ant having to carry the fullness of the load. We'll talk about that. And again, I'm Sam Ekstrom, the executive producer here at Locked On Sports Minnesota. This should be a good show today. And since several of you mentioned this, let's talk about the Wolves without Cat. Um, they, they look great on Friday. They look great on Sunday. So cohesive. I think they had six players in double figures in both those games, really scoring kind of, um, in aggregate and putting together some really nice offensive performances without Carl Anthony Towns. Has their recent play given you guys the, the feeling that they can go into the playoffs and if cat is not fully healthy, they could win a playoff series without cat if need be, because it, we're right on that line. We don't know when he's going to be healthy again. I think the playoffs were about five and a half weeks from the time of his surgery. It's going to be a very tight turnaround to get him back, and they might have to do this. This is a very real possibility. They would have to win in the playoffs without Carl Anthony Towns. Jack Borman, can they do that? Yeah, I, I think they can, uh, although it does sound like the Wolves are optimistic that they'll get Carl back closer to the start of the playoffs than to the end of a first-round series. Um, and, and trust me, if Carl Anthony Towns, if his knee is fine and it's just conditioning, he will play the five, seven, ten minutes, whatever it is, um, to, to get out there. But, yeah, I think with his in, after his injury, they're leaning into what they're best at, right? And, and they're running a ton of high pick and roll. They're spreading defenses out. They're, they're really sharing the ball well. Uh, they're, they're getting efficient looks, and they're not turning the ball over as, as much. And, and something we talked about coming out of the All-Star break, so before Carl got hurt, was the Timberwolves shooting more threes. And, and as a result of playing this way, uh, they, they shot the sixth fewest threes a game, 32 a game before Carl got hurt. They're shooting just shy of 37 a game since he got hurt, which is the 10th most. So that's a pretty big improvement. And in their last five games, they're shooting 44.5% from three, which is third in the NBA. And then with their turnover rate, before it was just under 15%, so 15% of their possessions ended in turnovers. That was seventh worst in the league. And now they're at about 11.5%, which is the fifth best mark in the league. And, and, and as a result, I mean, they, they have the ninth best offense in the league over the last two weeks, um, which is up from the 16th best offense, you know, over the course of the whole season. And they've, been, and they've still been a top 10 team in the league uh, in, in terms of offensive rating and defensive rating in the last two weeks. And that's that's definitely good enough to win a playoff series. Uh, when you think about the fact that only three teams have done that for the entire season, uh, it, it certainly should inspire confidence. And I think you, you look at the way the Timberwolves played, especially in that game last week against Denver, 
second night of a back to back, you lose an hour traveling from Utah, really tough. You know, you're, you're down guy, shorthanded. And, and what do you do? You, you just come out and you, and you junk the game up, play completely different than you're used to playing. And you almost steal one from the defending champs, I think. And that was without, you know, Nas and without Rudy and, and to be able to put games together like that, I think, kind of shows you that these aren't the same old Timberwolves in, in a sense that, that they just have a really fun collective fight. And, and this team, or, or this crowd at Target Center is really bought into it. I don't know if, you know, if it comes through as well on TV as it does for us sitting in the arena, but it, it's it's been a joy to watch and, and the fans have been incredible throughout this whole, you know, run without Cat. No doubt. And this is what good teams do, Ron. They, they lose a piece and it's next man up and they don't really miss a beat. Yeah, and, and so... I'm going to pay off the tease early. Uh, Razy, we're not talking about that kind of video. Uh, Kendrick Perkins five weeks ago. And so we talked about with Michael Grady about this. And I will give Kendrick Perkins uh, his flowers on his next comments like the last two weeks. So on my show with uh, Michael Grady, I kind of hated on Kendrick Perkins. And I said, Kendrick Perkins, and this is what Kendrick Perkins said. When they asked him, and, and Sam, we've talked about this. I think we talked about it on the basketball party too. They asked the entire like, group of like big time announcers and, and and studio analysts if you had to pick five teams to defend or sorry challenge the nuggets for a championship who would it be let me tell you it wasn't the timberwolves in their five and kendrick perkins reason his reasoning um for the dallas mavericks not his number one thing he had mavericks is like fourth he said he trusts the mavericks over the timberwolves and this is why he said their guy talking about the Timberwolves, Anthony Edwards, scores just as many points as the Mavericks' second guy, which is Kyrie Irving. Well, since then, now, and it's one point, but one point within a span of like a couple games is a lot of points. So that means now Anthony Edwards is almost averaging 27 points, Kyrie's averaging 25. So that is no longer the same. They used to be the same, and this was like a month ago maybe. Kendrick Perkins' newest comment, and I'm going to give it to you guys, his newest comment, when it comes down to Anthony Edwards, not only is he must see TV, he's actually the future face of the league. So clearly Ant sent him the video. He sent him the video of the dunk because with this quote, it's the dunk of the dislocated finger. It's also the dunk um, when he didn't count, you know, against when, when Jimmy Butler. And I think what Perk is seeing in now the newest videos of Anthony Edwards is, yeah, he's not a true scorer like Kyrie. He's not going to just one-on-one -on -one every single time. He plays within the scope of the team. And now I think Kendrick Perkins figures it out. But Anthony Edwards, without Carl Anthony Towns, we're seeing a different Anthony Edwards. And I, and I agree with Jack. There's less turnovers. It's more efficient basketball. Knowing It's coming back to me probably. And, and nothing against Cat, but I think he kind of knows. Like if I dribble, dribble, pass, Cat probably is going to take this. Everybody else is like, Niles Reed's like, let me get it back to Ant. Does Ant have it again? Nope. All right, now it's your turn to take the shot. Take the shot. Or Mike Conley, you're open now. Like dribble, dribble, pass, double screen. Let's let's twirl screen off of this. Let's 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 tornado screen off of this. Let's spin off of this. It's more of an offensive built team now. And not, again, nothing against Cat. When you have a guy with his his ability, you do sometimes have to just dump it down low, see what he can do within that paint area. But with Anthony Edwards, I hope Carlton Towns comes back real and like realizing, hey, if I make a couple extra passes. I'm going to be one-on-one -on -one in my spot versus in my spot with another guy coming over to help defense. And I think that's what this team is looking at. This team has more of a college feel now. They're moving the ball fast. And then they're like, look, if Anthony gets it, he's going. And that's what I love about this offense. But I'm pretty sure Perk has the video now of Anthony Edwards. <laughs> And I, I love that instead of getting more selfish, he's actually gotten less selfish without Cat. His assist numbers are actually up in Cat's absence rather than the other way around. Uh, Reggie, your thoughts? Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like the first few games after Cat went down, it was like, all right, Anthony Edwards is going to have to put the team on his back. And it made sense because, you know, you're talking about a team with, you know, some of the worst offensive efficiency even with Cat being there, you know, that's been a topic that, that's been talked about just about all season, just how stuck in the mud sometimes the offense gets. And you think that losing one of your all-stars, it would get worse. But I think what happens is is it forces the team to actually, like, run more things and, and just, like, play team basketball because you're not relying on guys who can just get you a bucket or, or get just get a shot you know, when you need something, you know, just put something up like cat, you know, one of the more efficient scores in the league, like, 
you know, if, if push comes to shove, Cat can get you a bucket. And, you know, you, you're thinking like, okay, well, now this is Ant's time to shine. And, and it is, but, and we've seen some of that, but I think what has been nice is so many other people have been getting involved. You know, when, when you have all five starters and double figures, like that's, that's a good, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. When you, when you shoot the most threes that, that you've shot, you know, uh, all season, like, and, and you make them that, that's a good thing. Like, I think, what I what I pan off the tees, it's really cool to see that Ant doesn't have to score 35, 40 a night. And the Wolves, I mean, they beat the they beat the Cavs by 13. They beat they beat the the Warriors. And I, I you know, the Warriors might be cooked, man. Like I think I think this is the the beginning or the end of the end. I I don't know however you want to phrase it, but you know, a, a shorthanded Wolves team can take it to this Warriors team and you know you got Draymond whining about stuff like because the Warriors are not the same team you know you, you hear Draymond chirping a little bit more but I think it's very encouraging as Jack said you had the defending champs on the ropes you come out and you beat the Cavs you beat the Warriors and Ant you know on in both of those games Ant against the Warriors he scores 23 Ant against the Cavs he scores 16 and you don't even you don't even need more scoring output from him for them to to win. And so I think that's a very encouraging thing because you know that if if you need him to, Ant can go and get a bucket. And you know, he's changing the perception of a Kendrick Perkins, as Ron said. But you got guys like Nas Reed who can go six six of eight from three and and just score 20 and, and you're good. You know, I think that was the the big thing about them signing Nas in the offseason and just building up that depth, you know, just because Cat missed a lot of games last year. You don't anticipate that he'll do it again, but, you know, things happen. But they have the guys that can do what they need to do to win these games, even without Cat. And that is encouraging headed towards the postseason. Yeah, and, and a big reason why they've won without Cat is because Nas has been so good, including in the starting lineup of late. We'll talk about that change and how it's looked coming up next on the Minnesota Basketball Party. We are presented today by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is what keeps your ride or die alive. That's their mantra at eBay Motors. They've got everything you need to maintain your vehicle, which is so important, especially in this taxing time of year when you've got the snow and the ice like we have in the Twin Cities. Uh, superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style eBay Motors has got you covered. They've got over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. All the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to you as customers. All right, back on the Minnesota Basketball Party. Again, check out the Ron Johnson Show yesterday with Michael Grady, voice of the Wolves, who, by the way, made his debut on the NBA on TNT last night. Good for him in the Mavericks-Kings game. Uh, the Minnesota Football Party will be live tomorrow at about 11 a.m., going live on that show now Mondays and Thursdays. So back to the Wolves and their changes without Cat. They have put Nas Reed recently in the starting lineup. He has, even with Cat out, he has still typically been a bench guy. Kyle Anderson has been uh, the starter. But recently putting Nas in the starting lineup. Um, and there's even a game, I think, where Nas started and Kyle Anderson finished. But we go to Ron Johnson. How do you think the Nas starting move has worked out how does that look and how like what's what's the domino effect of putting Nas in the starting five well I mean honestly if you look at size I think you're getting this a similar like size guy from cat so uh but skill set wise he can when he gets hot I mean we've seen it he can knock down the three so he does still give you ability to stretch the floor he doesn't you know create a vacuum into the lane um he he can play defense he's unselfish I think it works I, I do think it works 
I honestly, and, and again, I think we're going to see this at some point, maybe the Nuggets is going to be Nas Reed, Cat, and Gobert at the same time. Because now you have a guy like Cat, I hate to say it, I don't want to say it out loud, that can play the three. And if you can put Cat at the three, now you just got really big, you got really strong, you're stretching the floor, but now you can have Nas Reed flip and guard the three. Cat guards the four, Rudy guards the five, and Jokic, and then you all can pick and pop and change whenever they're setting picks for Jokic other than the guard but even a guard up top I think he still can stay in front of Jokic Jokic just can shoot the three over him so I, I do like Nas Reed getting inserted the thing about the NBA and I, I forgot oh Isaiah Thomas Isaiah Thomas uh did a podcast with, with uh Draymond Green and he talked about who's what position in today's NBA and he's like he did all the stats and like you do this your assist to ratio blah blah He's like, dude, you're the point guard talking to Draymond Green. He's like, Steph Curry. And he wasn't hating on Steph Curry, but Draymond was actually like, who's your best point guards in the history of the NBA? And Isaiah said, if it was the 80s, it would be Steph. But it's not like Steph's not a point guard anymore compared to what you're supposed to do as a point guard. He said Draymond's the point guard because he brings the ball up the floor. He gets the offense going and he sets the original play. That's kind of like Jokic. Like he's positionless. And so now when you have a guy that's getting the play started at the top as your five, I mean, imagine Bill Cartwright with the Bulls trying to get the, the game started at the top. He was absolutely trash when it came to the, to the jumper. So <laughs> there's no way. He couldn't shoot free throws correctly. So it's just they're positionless guys, and that's why I like Nas Reed because he gives you another positionless guy. He can guard the three, he can guard the four, and he can guard the five. And so I think he's just doing his job, uh, and, and, I, and I do like it in there. I, I just say when Cat comes back, I hope Cat's watching from the bench of how the team is playing so when he comes back, He's like, look, I don't need to come back and impose my will. Let me play within this scheme, and we could be champions. Wolves, 4-0 in the last four games where Nas starts. Uh, Reggie, what do you think of the move? You know, it's interesting because I have kind of been silently banging the table for that to happen for a while, you know, especially once Cat went out. It just made sense to me. But Finch was like, no, more slow-mo, more slow-mo. That's my guy. And it's like, okay, I get it. But then, you know, the Wolves went from, man, can this big man thing work? Like, you got the Twin Towers going? Like, is that a thing? And, you know, everybody's like, oh, can they win with two big men? And the lineup is going away from what the league is going to or what the league is. And then they come out this year and they show that it actually works. So they go from that. I'm like, oh, well, I mean, if if you're just – I mean, Cat and, and Nas are two different players, obviously, but if you're just continuing on from what you have already established, just plug Nas in there for Cat, and it's two big men starting just like it was before Cat went down. But it was like they ended up going from being like the, the big team to now all of a sudden playing that small ball with, with – slow-mo at the at the five and it's just like okay that's a that's a strategy you just kind of like flip the script on everything but I think you know Nas these last couple games that he has started has shown why he probably should be starting you know 26 minutes uh as a starter <laughs> against the Cavs slow-mo still got 27 in that game but Nas did start and he showed his efficiency which he continues to do. He's a microwave at times, you know, 18 points plus 10 when he's on the floor. Um, Slow-mo got more rebounds than him and more assists than him in that game. But, you know, whatever. But then he comes out against the Warriors and, like I said, 6 of 8 from 3, 7 of, seven of 11 from the floor. And he has 12 boards and he gets 20 points. And so I think he just continues to show that he is a player that can be counted on, relied upon, and he is an ascending player in this league. If you give him the the time and the minutes, you know, they have this team has really developed him and allowed him to blossom to be a hooper. Like he's just, as Ron said, like, you know, you might call him a positionless player. Like I just call him a hooper. Like he just he just goes out there and hoops. And I think that's something that the Timberwolves benefit from. And I think if he continues to be in the starting lineup, he'll continue to hoop and continue to prove the Wolves right on uh, starting him in the first place. Jack, hey, Reggie, uh, I, Reggie, I got a question yeah. for you, Reggie, real quick. So when 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 Coach asks for slow mo to come in, does he have to talk slow like that? It's like Kyle Anderson can't hear him if he talks too fast. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know what? I just did that. I don't even know where it came from, honestly. But I imagine that it's something. Kyle, we want you to go out <laughs> there tonight. And Slomo's like, I got you, coach. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, don't I like know. to imagine that happens in the film session, like when Finch is trying to slow the tape down of a slow mo play. He just like plays it moving. fast. It's like, is it paused? Is it paused? Um, and, yeah, he, he keeps it real slow. But uh, but Jack, on Friday, did you have the Nas Reed beach towel? Did the did the media members get gifted the towel so they could wave it? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, oh. We got a beach towel. Nas Reed. Two words. Nas Reed. That's big Nas, not the little one. Take that to the beach. Yeah. I, I will be taking that to uh, to Lake Harriet this summer. Um, no, hey, no, and Jack, can no you question. explain what was that about? Because I missed why they had those. Yeah, so uh, their city edition jerseys are uh, kind of inspired by the the lakes around here, and so it was a it was a city edition night. And you know, I don't really know how they landed on a Nas Reed beach <laughs> towel, but Nas was pretty uh, involved in all their, you know, marketing and rollout of the the new City Edition theme. Like when Young Gravy, by the way, I still can't believe they had Young <laughs> Gravy do that little concert, but I was there for that. And they had uh, Nas and Mike Conley as part of that rollout. So I'd imagine it had something to do with that. But, um, but yeah, it was incredible. Like you had chills looking around the arena, seeing all the Nas Reed towels and, and he would, he was kind of speechless after the game talking about it, but, um, yeah, with, with him in the starting lineup, I mean, that, that lineup this season, Mike, Ant, Jaden, Nas and Rudy is a plus 14 net rating. That's like 98th percentile in the league and it, it's 200 minutes together. So it's a, it's a very you know, sizable sample there and they have a 91 defensive rating, which is insanely good. Um, and they were awesome versus Cleveland. I think the great thing about Nas is he just comes out of the gates firing. You know, we see it all the time. He has a knock for knocking down that, that first or second uh, three that he puts up right away when he comes in the game. And it's great that he starts the game that way because it just kind of gets everybody going. Um, but they, they weren't awesome against Golden State. You know, the, the Warriors had Draymond Green on, on Rudy Gobert. And so the, the Wolves wanted to make sure that Draymond Green wasn't flying up the floor and doubling Anthony Edwards. So they brought Nas to set more screens, and then they were throwing the ball into Rudy in the post uh, way too much. And so they had nine turnovers in the first quarter. But then in their, their minutes in the third quarter and the fourth quarter, they were, they were much better, much more efficient. Ended up shooting five of 12 from three as a, as a lineup out there together, which was awesome. And I think that's what where Carl needs to be watching what this starting five is doing and think to himself, this is what I can do when I come back in the game. You don't see Nas Reed posting up at the nail when Rudy Gobert is in the dunker spot and cratering the entire spacing for his teammates. Rudy Gobert, or excuse me, Nas Reed is playing a ton uh, as a spot up shooter in the corners, in the slots. He's cutting really well. He's playing off the catch, but he's not driving out of control and ending up on the ground all that much. And he's really only posting up uh, deep in the deep in the low post on the block when he's got a three on him, like Ron was talking about earlier. And I think those are the things that Carl can do when he's with the starting five. I think you can get more of those post ups, more of those drives out there when he's in those blended lineups uh, with the bench unit. But I, I think as a starter, Nas has kind of shown what Carl needs to do. It's just shoot up. It's just shoot a ton of threes in high volume, be a ball mover space the floor so Ant and Rudy or, or Mike and Rudy are able to run pick and roll and, and get the ball moving and, and get guys the ball in their spots and create efficient shots and you know I, I it's going to be and again that's kind of what the offensive identity for the Timberwolves has become since Carl Anthony Towns has been out and again it's not Carl's fault that the offense is playing great right now it's more just that They've had to. They've been forced to lean into this style of play without Carl because Carl's a very good post-up player. I know people think that he sucks at posting up, but his post-up numbers are wildly efficient this year, at least in the at least in the deep low post. And and I just think that you know they they need to continue this style of play when Carl comes back, and he can totally do it. He's one of the best spot-up shooters ever of all time, and, and it, he's just got to do more of it. And I don't know why he is unwilling in a sense to trade in. 
two drives or two post-ups for an additional three or four three-point shots a game. Because if Carl Anthony Towns shot nine threes a game, he would average 26 or 27 points a game. I would debate anybody on that. And so, you know, it's, it's just going to be a matter of, you know, whether he's going to be able to do it. And maybe we'll see him do it more because his knee might limit his mobility and he might not be able to drive or post up and he might not have the same leg strength and explosion. And that's exactly what we saw last season when he came back from that calf injury. He just shot more threes and he was uh, a lot more effective in, in games three, four and five of that, mm-hmm. that series against Denver. So, so we'll see if that ends up being the case again when he comes back. Yeah, Cat was quite good when he came back last year off a long, long layoff. This one isn't nearly as long. I I do get nervous, and this is for any member of the starting lineup. This isn't Cat-specific. I do get nervous if his debut is game one of the playoffs, adding a piece that late in the game so abruptly does like throw me off a little bit. Is it going to mess with whatever they have going? But I think that's a gamble you take when it's Cat. Um, and, and, and just, I think they've played but, enough before his injury to know kind of what it's going to look like and how they need to play. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. Um, after this, we'll talk a little college basketball. We're all in a bracket pool together. How's that going? And are there any prospects the Wolves could uh, eye up here in the latter stages of March Madness? It's coming up on the Minnesota Basketball Party. We are partnered with Amazon Fire TV. If you've noticed, maybe you have Amazon Fire TV. Lockdown Sports Minnesota is there on your Amazon Fire TV device. Um, It's your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs. The the, uh, Fire TV Stick, you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, coming up, twin start tomorrow, or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. They recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date with the world of sports. News, sports, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking, it's all on Fire TV and Alexa devices as well. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust me on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. We're also presented by Nissan. Let me tell you about the Nissan Rogue, which is you know, literally one of the best SUVs on the market right now. It's perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-in. So you're always updating Assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting with your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right in to the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. It's a perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. If you like to push things a little bit further, how about the 2024 Nissan Armada? They'll change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can sit up to 8 but in first-class luxury and style. Toe bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Have some adventures. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Armada, or also the Nissan Pathfinder, and go find that next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. March Madness talk. The... Locked on Sports Minnesota bracket pool. Uh, I'm bringing it up right now. How are we doing in this thing? How are we doing with our bracket so far through uh, through two rounds? Reg? So uh, this is the second straight year that I have not even filled out a bracket. Wow. I, yeah. 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 So I was just on vibes this year and last year. I just wanted to enjoy the games. You know, enjoy the the time, see the upsets, all that good stuff. So I, I didn't even fill out a bracket this time. I just, I don't know. It's like hmm. it's gonna get busted anyway. So it's like, what's the point? You know. In some so, ways, you're liber- You're probably liberated to where yeah, you can I feel cheer that, for, 
for you can cheer for the teams you want to cheer for. You don't have to, like it's it's not fun when you have to cheer for like a Duke or a you know Kansas. Like you don't like being in those situations, but you kind of want to honor your bracket, so you have to. So I get exactly. that. Especially um, I not did. Kansas. I was I was glad to see them get bounced because you know forget yeah. that school. And, Right. Yeah. No, that, that one, I actually had Samford beating them. So I, I kind of felt that one coming. Mm. Uh, they almost did, but Jack Borman, you are in, where are, yeah, toward 25th out of 31 in this, uh, in this here locked on sports pool. Yeah. 25 is fitting considering I spent about 25 minutes on my bracket this year um doing doing research I, I was all in on buckyball uh from what i had read uh with with samford i had samford going to the sweet 16. uh i also had uh kentucky in the championship game so i was that was mostly just uh uh really hoping that we could get five games of rob dillingham just because he's a ton of fun to watch um and uh reed shepherd i guess heard the the, the the number one pick buzz and decided to just completely crap the bet so um <laughs> yeah so my bracket is uh a little bit in, in shambles over that and, and some shots in the dark that i had just you know didn't pan out but that's the way it goes and uh that that's march so yeah ron johnson uh you are why can't i find anybody i think i'm like 17th. i'm 19. I'm 17th. Okay. Oh, I must have improved. I was 19th when I last checked. So, yeah. So for me, I noticed the one thing is nobody picked North Carolina to win except for me. So I'm not even worried. I'm just going to wait down to the end. I was hoping Houston. I was up watching the Houston Texas A&M game. And I'm not going to lie. I was hoping Houston lost to Texas A&M because then that would knock Brandon Warren just off his high horse right now. Um, but it didn't happen. Houston somehow pulled it out. Even, and even They shouldn't even been in that way. I, I didn't even... I had turned the game off because I thought it was over. And then I saw Reggie's tweet, like, Houston, what are you doing? <laughs> and so I was like, wait, what's going on right now? So I went back to the game and dude hits the three as I turned the TV on. And I'm like, whoa, what in the heck just happened? Like, how did they even get there? And so then after that, I was kind of dialed in and, and I saw Sheed start going to work and realized he is one of the top point guards in the country. So him against Duke, because we're going to talk about draft picks coming up and I'll explain why I'm really interested in the Houston versus Duke game. Uh, but I hope Duke knocks Houston down. Like, just just punch him in the mouth. Play play Christian Leitner ball. Uh, show Cooper Flag why he committed. And, and let's go ahead and get them up out of here. Because I got Duke, North Carolina in the championship. So I need Duke to beat Houston in the Sweet 16. Come on, Ron. Come on, man. So, look. This was this was so, this was was so what was so funny. So, we were on a resort. North Carolina, stand look. up. Take your shirt off. And twist it right your head. So we can like a he helicopter. Goes. So we were on we were on a resort in Jamaica with my father in law. He turned sixty this weekend. He is a Houston Cougars alum, and he is a diehard Houston fan. Used to be a season ticket holder, all that. And so he skips out on the rest of the the festivities for the night because he wanted to watch the Houston game. And so we're sitting with him in his uh, hotel room. Me, my wife Alexis, and him watching the game. And for that last two and a half minutes of the game, he did not say a word. Like, a word. He was just watching, like, with his mouth open the whole time. Just like. And he didn't say a word. Meanwhile, my wife is just, oh, my God, what are you all doing? She's, like, really hyper with, you know, competition. She's, what are you doing? Make a shot. And then when, you know, um, was who's it? sharp filed out she was just like oh my god what is happening right now that wasn't a foul <laughs> like she's just going off and my father-in-law still just sitting there in silence and then when it went to overtime he was just like like he broke the silence he was just like man this is crazy what is going on and then like didn't talk again until the game ended he was like Ooh, oh my god that was stressful at <laughs> <laughs> it the whole time it was just, it was madness. And so then, you know, then we were able to get back to the, you know, the festivities. But, like, that whole, like, game experience was crazy. Houston almost fumbled that. But what a epic game that, that ended up being. Yeah, I don't know where he sits in, in draft prospect talk. But, yeah, that Jamal Shed or Sheed, however you say the last name, he was nice. Shed. Shed. I, I liked I liked him. Um, competitive, gritty, 
Like, yeah. Houston's and, and, guards the last few years have just been a bunch of dogs that have been super yeah. fun to watch. I am terrible at knowing college basketball prospects. And granted, there's only a handful that are relevant anymore, right? Like a lot of a lot of these prospects are international. Um, and a lot of them, you know, you're not that impressed necessarily. It's like, okay, your stats are fine. You're not like jumping off the screen, but NBA teams love their length or they love their their physical like build, even though they might not be as productive. So I I watch all these good players in March Madness and I don't know if they're like NBA, you know, destined because they might not have the size or they might not have, you know, whatever it is that NBA teams are looking for. So I just have a hard time in this tournament identifying prospects. Um, are there any um, that they caught your eye, Ron Johnson? Yeah. Um, as I started stating, I'm really going to be tuned into this Houston game uh, because I want to see Sheed, who's one of the top now draft picks prospects, I guess you'll say guards, um, because of what he's been doing this season with Houston, who was the number one team for a while. But then also on the big stage, that kid played every single minute of the Texas A&M Houston game besides when he fouled out and he showed he has absolute heart. He, he reminds me of a stronger and I'm not, and I'm not hating on this guy because I think Michael Grady talked about this on my show too, but he reminds me of a stronger Baron Davis. Like he just, he takes over games. He's like, he's willing to play defense. He's a two way guard. You have to kind of have to be in college though, except for Steph Curry wasn't in college. I don't know if you guys remember Dayton, Steph Curry didn't play defense then. So I don't know why we were concerned now. Um, but this kid is good. So when him and Jared McCain for Duke go against each other, and if you guys have not seen Jared McCain or heard his story about his brother and his brother's like the uh, he's the equipment manager now or trainer or something. He's on staff for Duke because he didn't he what he didn't get a chance to make it. Um, and so he wanted to stay on and help his brother try to make it. And his brother looks like he's going to be a first round draft pick now. I want to see those two go because the Timberwolves, I think, are going to have like a late 20s pick unless they make some moves. He could be the guy they take. He's a 23rd overall rated player. He's the fifth overall rated point guard in this spot. And he could sit behind Mike Conley for two years like a like a quarterback who's waiting in the wings to take over. Um, Tyus Jones, you look at Trey Jones, he has that type of mentality. Um, and he's unselfish because when you look at Duke players, he has some other top draft picks on his team. So I want to see this, like Duke versus Houston. It honestly reminds me of like Michigan when they hated Duke. Like it feels like the Fab Five type guys versus Duke and so I want to see like how do they come to line up and honestly I'm, I'm kind of scared for Duke because because Houston Houston is bullies like they gonna walk out there they be like man we don't care y'all go to Duke like y'all gotta go to class tomorrow we can do whatever we want like we got fly Sam and Gemma back here like hooking us up like what y'all got like Christian Leitner get out of here Grant Hill where is he at stop it so I, this is going to be one of the better I think like knock out some dirty some kicks and trips like Duke's can trip somebody but yeah Jeremy Kane's my guy I want to see how he does. Also, Sheed, I don't think the Timberwolves can get him because he's probably going to go too early. But if somehow, some way, as a point guard, he falls, I, w I wouldn't mind the Timberwolves getting him either. Looks like Duke's got another guy, Filipowski, who might go around that time. Big guy, seven-footer. Um, not that, like the Wolves need that. Um, any, <laughs> <laughs> anyone else, Jack or Reggie, any other prospects we should keep our eye on? Yeah, I had a I, McCain was the the first one for me, but but I had a couple in the kind of bigger wing category, if you will, that are, that are maybe a little bit more plug and play. The first one that I had was was Baylor Shireman uh, as a senior forward for Creighton. He's a fifth year senior, uh, so he's twenty three. Uh, I, I think would be twenty four by the time he's a rookie. Um, kind of around that six seven, two hundred pounds. He's a career thirty nine percent three point shooter. He's got a really good feel as a second side playmaker. He's averaging four assists this year, 2.2 uh, turnovers in a high usage role, leading the uh, leading Creighton and scoring at, at just over 18 a game. And he's a great rebounder for his size too. Um, he's much more of a three than a four, but he's averaging 9.1 rebounds a game. Um, you know, he's a, he's a guy that doesn't, you know, isn't the most explosive athlete, doesn't move super well laterally in space. So defense is going to be a concern with him. Um, but if the Timberwolves are looking for a, you know, a guy that they can bring off the bench that can give you, you know, seven, eight, nine points a game, can space the floor, shoot, can, can play make a little bit. I, I think he would make sense uh, as a late first round pick or, or an early second round pick. Cause remember the Timberwolves are going to get the Grizzlies second round pick, which is going to be, you know, one of the first six or seven picks um, of the second rounds, so they're going to have two picks in a span of, 
you know, 10 or 15 draft picks, which would be nice for them. And then the other one I had was Alex Carabin. Uh, he's a sophomore forward for UConn, uh, 21 years old. Again, another 6'8", 210-pound guy, can stretch the floor. He's a 40% three-point shooter, averaging 14 and 5 this season. Uh, not a great athlete, again, but uh, is, a, is a really efficient playmaker. Um, and he also has some post skills down low. Uh, he's been more than willing to to walk some guards or smaller wings down into the post and, and kind of showcase some some post moves down there uh, as well. So he, he makes up for some of his lack of uh, lateral movement with with some really nice strength down there. So those are a couple guys that that I had that it could be around potentially either at uh, that that late first round spot or the early or the early second round. Tyler Kolek, point guard from Marquette, or PJ Hall, big wing from Clemson, who's kind of one of the the Cinderellas right now. He's averaged fifteen or more the last three years, and can shoot the three a little bit, almost forty percent last year uh, for Clemson. Those are the two that I've got my eye on. Any from you, Reg? Yeah, obviously I like Shed. Um, Jamal Shed is a is a, a solid. Uh, point guard who's just a hooper man he he can just he could just hoop man I, I think he had some struggles in that game against Texas A&M but then when everybody else fouled out like he showed like okay I can go get a bucket you know I'll make these free throws even if I split them <laughs> down the stretch um, I, I liked what I saw from him and then this is just me being biased just because you know he's from where I'm from so uh, Arizona, Caleb Love. I know a lot of people were kind of writing him off after the the North Carolina thing, the Michigan snafu that happened. But you know he's found a he's found a really nice spot for himself out in Arizona, and he's been playing well. Um, and you know he's clearly the the best player on that team. And I think you know he doesn't necessarily fit a need for the Timberwolves, but you know having another guard who can go get a bucket. You know he's, I think he's six four. Um, and uh, an efficient score. Uh, I, I think I think who who wouldn't who wouldn't like that? And so I think you know another one of those guards from St. Louis, man. You know, there's they're starting to fill up the league now. Um, so I, I think that would be that would be a good a good prospect for the Wolves. I didn't mention that uh, my bracket is in fourth place, by the way, in that pool. Just saying. Just saying, it'll be shattered by next week. I guarantee it. Um, but who's your who's your champion though, Sam? Illinois. Okay, okay. Mm. they've been pretty good the first two games. They're they're, they're a little iffy though, you know. And then the whole like, man, when I was at that that Big Ten championship game and that student section chat chanting um, different things at Terrence Shannon Jr. You know, with all the the allegations that he has against him, it's brutal when he goes uh, anywhere. Because of you know these these student sections, they are they are something else. I'll, I'll just yeah. leave it at that. I yeah, I won't. I I'm not. I I won't touch that. But I will say that that anybody who plays Dane Danger is in the danger zone. I'm I'm banking on Dane, my Park Center guy, to get the job done for Illinois. Uh, we've reached the part of the show where we predict the week. Wolves have four games. They've got Detroit. Tonight, the Nuggets, big one on Friday, must win if they want the one seed. Bulls and Rockets, four games. Last week, we all predicted, I think, 2-0. and We did the hands, and, and we all got it right. Um, what do we have this week for Predict the Week? Reggie? Yeah, okay. So here's, here's the thing. The Wolves have the best... Uh, record against conference opponents this season. They're 34 and 12. Uh, the Thunder are 32 and 15. And then the, the Wolves are actually uh, 11 and 3 in the division as well. And they have a really good home record. So you look at these, these four games and you got, what, four of five at, at home? I'm, I'm counting the Raptors game too. You didn't mention that one, but that's a second of a, of a back-to-back next week. But I think they can obviously beat the Pistons. They can take down the Bulls. The Rockets are, the Rockets is going to be a tough matchup because they are kind of surging as of, as of late. They're trying to take that, that last playoff spot from the, the, um, the Warriors. So I think I'll go, I'll go three and one. I'll go three and one. All right, Jack. I've got them going four and oh, um, you know, I, I think, 
three of the four teams they're playing are significantly worse than the Timberwolves, and they've uh, won their last, you know, I, I think they've won their last nine games or either seven or nine games against teams either below 500 or really decimated by injuries. And I, I just think the Wolves have kind of figured out what, what the formula is for, for playing against the Nuggets and trying to junk up the game and play really aggressive defense. And, you know, I think they're going to take that game incredibly seriously. And, and, and with the way they've been playing, it's been really, really difficult for opposing teams to defend. And now they get back Nas Reed and Rudy Gobert, and they'll be able to play that same style and, and hopefully have a little bit more talent to help them get him, get them into the finish line. But if, if they can split those two games that they've got left in Denver, I think that that would be huge. And, um, and, and like Reggie said, or I think it was you, Sam, who said, you know, if you, if you want the number one seed, you got to win this game. And, and I just think the, the Timberwolves are going to rise to that occasion. Yeah, they, they can't win the one seed with that win, but they can lose it. If they lose that game, I think that the one seed hopes are probably exactly. dead. Ron. Yeah, I'm going to go three and one. I think Pistons, Bulls, Rockets are a win. Um, I'm struggling to say four and oh and beat the Nuggets here. Um, without Cat, I think, like I said, it's going to be tough when you look at Jokic, what he can do, but I think they can get three and one. I, and maybe they can shock the world and beat the Pistons and the Nuggets. Pistons are easy, but beat the Nuggets. And then you know, maybe turn around and lose like the Bulls or the Rockets or something. But uh, I'm going to say three and one. Yeah, I'm I'm not a believer in the Rockets looking at the, the schedule of the teams that they've beaten. It's not really a murderer's row. They've, they've been the beneficiary of a pretty soft schedule of late. So I think that's a win. I, I think three and one as well. I'm, I can't say they're going to beat the Nuggets. The Nuggets just don't lose basketball games right now. Um, but I still think three and one would be a good week. And we'll reconvene next Wednesday to talk about it. Wolfstock every Wednesday, Minnesota basketball party. Jack Borman, Canis Hoopis, Ron Johnson, host of the Ron Johnson Show, Reggie Wilson. Donate to Reggie's food fight. Still time to do so with his, uh, that CARE 11 operation. And I'm Sam Ekstrom here with Locked On Sports Minnesota. Thanks for watching and listening on the Locked On Wolves podcast feed. Talk to you next week.